Hi, it's Laura here from the Parks Trust in Milton Keynes and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to put together a weather station. There's a how-to guide that goes with this video that shows you how to make each of the parts for the weather station and what I'm going to talk you through now is how to put those together and how to use them to make sure you are recording your data accurately. So the first part of our weather station is a thermometer to measure temperature. Now the best place to position your thermometer is out of direct sunlight. So if you've got a shed on the side of the shed or the side of a garage, that's a really good place to put your thermometer up so that you can get an accurate reading of the temperature. The next part of our weather station is the rain gauge. And a rain gauge measures how much rain or how much precipitation, so it could be snow or sleet or hail, uh, falls in a certain period of time. So we've made this weather station using a plastic bottle. The top's been cut off and then you just stick it back in inside itself and that provides a nice funnel uh, for the water to run into. At the side of the rain gauge, we've got a uh, measurement here of water in millimetres. And right in the very bottom, this red liquid we've got here is jelly. And the reason that I've put jelly in the bottom of this is because the bottom of the bog bottle is all wiggly, then by putting the jelly in, it gives us a nice even surface for the, to measure the water level from. So my jelly's not quite set. You do need to make sure that your jelly is set before you put your rain gauge out. And then when you put your measurements on the side, you can write them straight onto the bottle or you can stick them on a piece of tape like I've done here. You need to make sure that your measurements start from the surface of the jelly. So from that flat surface, and then you can measure how much rain falls in millimetres. Now, because this piece of equipment is going to be left outside, it's a good idea, if you can, to, to dig a little hole to be able to uh, put this into. And that just means that if it does get windy, it won't blow around and topple over. So just a little hole just to bury the very bottom part of it. The next uh, instruments that we've got are to measure the wind. And the first one here, this measures the wind speed. So what we've done here is I've got a garden cane and I've just tied some bits of old carrier bag to it. Now you can improvise, use whatever you can get hold of. So you might want to use ribbon, you might need to use bits of string and instead of a cane you could use a stick, whatever it is that you can get hold of. And what you do is you can either hold this up or you can plant it into the ground and you're looking to see how much movement there is on these tassels and then you can record the wind speed as either low, medium or high, depending how much movement you've got. So if it was down like this, we'd say the wind speed was low. If these were up here moving around lots, we'd say that the wind speed was high. Then the last instrument that I've got for the weather station here is a wind vane. And this one measures the direction that the wind is traveling. And I've made this just by using a cardboard circle and on this cardboard circle, I've drawn the points of the compass. And then through the middle of the cardboard circle, I've put a pencil. And on the bottom, I've got a piece of blue tack. And again, you can use modeling clay, plasticine, whatever you can get hold of, Play-Doh. And that just sticks onto a nice hard surface. So you could just stick this straight onto the, the ground if it's nice and flat. So I've got a pencil coming up through the middle. I've then got a drinking straw with two slits cut in the end and I've got the arrow head and the base of the arrow which have just been made out of cardboard and then through the middle here I've got a long drawing pin and that just holds the drinking straw uh, through the eraser so that the top part the arrow can blow around in the wind and you might need to wiggle the pin around in the straw just to make sure the circle is big enough that the straw can actually move. What you need to do with your wind vane is set up the direction so that the directions on your compass here are accurate. And to do that, you could use a compass. So I've got a compass here and I'm just gonna try and work out when north is. And so for my garden, north is, oh, right where I am, about that direction there. So I need to make sure that my north on my disc here is facing the same direction as north on my compass. If you haven't got a compass to use, you could always have a look on Google Earth uh, at your garden or your balcony or wherever you're going to put your weather station and see if there's a defining feature that you can work out. So for example, if you know that there's a back fence that faces in a westerly direction, then you need to make sure that west on your cardboard disc faces towards that fence that's in the westerly direction. 
and then what you do you'd bring this instrument outside and you let the arrow on the top just catch the wind and move around and when it settles you have a look at what direction the wind is traveling so right now for me the wind is blowing it's going to move again right now for me the wind is blowing in a southeasterly direction but it keeps changing now it's northwesterly and I would measure where it settles and which direction that wind is traveling now in the back of the how-to guide we have got a data record sheet where you can record your findings and you can do that each day each week it's entirely up to you but what is important is that you measure it at the same time each day so that you've got an accurate record over time and you can fill in each of these boxes and then you can start to look to see if there's any trends or patterns over time and you could then put your information into some graphs so you might want to draw a bar chart or a line chart or a line graph showing the temperature and how that's changed over the next few days or the next few weeks you could also get a bit more creative and make a better record chart than I've got here so you might want to think about other things that you could put in how would you describe the weather how does it feel what can you see are there any indicators so for example what's the percentage of cloud cover uh, how much are the trees moving and you could make some records like that to go in there as well we'd really really like to see what you come up with you might not even want to write your results down at all you might want to record your data in a different way maybe with a video diary or a sound diary of the readings that you're getting from each of your instruments so please record your data make some graphs make some charts show us what you've made and what you've created don't forget to tag us in at the parks trust and we'll see you soon bye bye